On December 7, 1944, exactly three years after the Pearl Harbor attack pushed the United States into World War II, the 77th Infantry Division, led by Major General Andrew Bruce, made an amphibious landing three and a half miles south of Ormoc City, Leyte, in the Philippines. The area was Leyte's largest and most crucial Japanese stronghold and supply base, and while the 77th's three infantry regiments came ashore virtually unopposed, the same could not be said of the Navy ships in the surrounding area. As the American destroyer USS Mahan patrolled off Ponson Island, nine Japanese bombers and four escort fighters suddenly appeared on the horizon and attacked her with all their might. The ship then suffered the wrath of one kamikaze bomber, but just as the crew thought they were done, one bomber after another kept diving straight into them. Leading Destroyer USS Mahan was the lead ship of the U.S. Navy's eponymous class of destroyer vessels, named after a 19th century naval historian. Her design boasted many significant advances over more traditional ships of the type, including protective gun shelters, emergency diesel generators, and a third set of quadruple torpedo tubes. The ship was commissioned on September 18, 1936, and measured 1,725 long tons at the deep load, had an overall length of 341 feet 3 inches, and was powered by a duo of General Electric's geared steam turbines that generated a maximum speed of 37 knots. In addition, her main battery consisted of five 5-inch 5 38-caliber guns, equipped with a fire control system configured for surface and aerial targets. And during wartime, her complement expanded to 250 officers and enlisted men. In 1937, Mahan and her crew left the Atlantic and steamed toward her new station at Pearl Harbor as part of Task Force 12. At the time, tensions between Japan and the United States were at an all-time high as the Second Sino-Japanese War had broken out, and it only got worse after the invasion of French Indochina in 1940. Then, as the United States and other European powers set up embargoes on iron and oil imports, the enraged Japanese decided to bring the United States to the forefront of World War II, beginning with the surprise attack on the Pearl Harbor naval base. That fateful day, on December 7, 1941, Mahan was at sea along with the aircraft carrier Lexington, three cruisers, and four other destroyers. Lexington's mission was to ferry marine aircraft to reinforce Midway Island that day. However, after news of the attack on the base, the task force commander received instructions to search for the Japanese strike force instead. The group was unable to locate the enemies during the following days, and the task force returned to Pearl Harbor on December 12th. Even so, Mahan would have many encounters with Imperial Japanese forces throughout her career. Stellar Efforts Early in World War II, USS Mahan and her crew took part in raids all over the Pacific Theater, mainly in the Marshall and Gilbert Islands. For her participation in the Battle of the Santa Cruz Islands in October of 1942, renowned admirals Chester Nimitz and William Halsey commended Mahan's destroyer group for its stellar effort in screening aircraft carriers USS Hornet and USS Enterprise against highly difficult odds. The destroyer also participated in the amphibious landings at Salamaua, Ley, and Finchhafen during the New Guinea campaign the following year to take the northeast coast from Imperial Japan. She also took part in the landings at Arawe and Borgen Bay, New Britain, providing support for the troops at Los Negros Island in the Admiralty Islands. In early 1944, after extended wartime service in the Pacific Theater, the veteran destroyer was ordered to head to California for an overhaul at Naval Shipyard at Mare Island. Wartime refits brought the vessel's weaponry down to four 5-inch guns, and additional armament included twin 40mm cannons and four to six 20mm guns. Because she was primarily intended for surface and anti-submarine warfare, she was not heavily armed with anti-aircraft weapons. After exercising for months, Mahan returned to New Guinea on October 20th escorting convoys between Hollandia and Leyte. Then, as the year neared its end, 
She performed anti-submarine patrols off the Leyte Gulf in the Philippines. One more mission. In November, lousy weather and hostile terrain bogged down the land campaign to seize Leyte from Imperial Japan. The most significant impediment was the Japanese's ability to reinforce and resupply their headquarters at Ormak City, on the island's western side, and the American forces' inability to counter this advantage. Consequently, the unavoidable decision was made to attack Ormak City with an amphibious operation. On the morning of December 7, 1944, several troops from the 77th Infantry Division landed just south of the city. At the time, Mahan was under orders to stand out for the anti-submarine patrol line. After arriving at her station in Ormok Bay at the crack of dawn, the vessel changed course and headed toward a fighter director station five miles from Pore Island. Then, at 9.43 a.m., nine twin-engine Japanese bombers detected an escort of four more fighters approaching them. The crew was given the order to open fire, and lookouts aboard Mahan quickly noticed three American P-38 Lightnings attempting to overtake the Japanese fighters and bombers, bringing three down. As two damaged bombers began smoking, the nearest one to the vessel changed course and went into a steep banking dive directly toward the destroyer. Leveling off only 50 feet above the water off the ship's starboard beam, the Japanese bomber closed to within 2,000 yards of the vessel and headed for the bridge. Mahan's gunners fired incessantly at the incoming aircraft, and the gunners scored several hits, successfully blowing the aircraft apart only 50 yards from the ship. Incessant attacks. The second bomber was not far behind and was quite disoriented from the explosions. It then passed over Mahan before turning about and successfully crashing into her. This time, the attacker struck between the waterline and the forecastle deck level near one of the five-inch guns. It also tore off the destroyer's mast, entirely disabling her radar and radio. What followed were some of the most disturbing suicide bomber attacks ever recorded. In his non-fiction investigative book, Kamikaze, author Raymond Lamont Brown wrote, quote, Observers were to record of this, one of the most unusual and devastating of Kamikaze assaults of 1944, that the Japanese aircraft used torpedo launching tactics, but when they had been hit, they switched to kamikaze attacks, diving on Mahan. The third and fourth bomber aircraft flying toward Mahan then crashed into the sea as they were taken down by the ship's accurate gunfire. A fifth plane then hit the now struggling destroyer on her starboard side, knocking down the forward stack and foremast, while a sixth struck the starboard side next to gun number two. Amidst the chaos, Mahan's men valiantly fought off more Japanese bombers, threatening to strike the vessel repeatedly. A seventh kamikaze pilot streaked in on a strafing run. Damaged by gunfire from the vessel's gunners, the burning Japanese aircraft struck the water only a couple hundred yards ahead of the ship. Another kamikaze bomber that was already struggling after being hit by brave lightning pilots then attempted to crash into the destroyer, but missed and also exploded in the sea. Finally, after the ninth Japanese aircraft passed overhead, the shocked crew aboard Mahan made emergency flank speed to try and reach other vessels of her attack group. Crucial Decisions As they were being attacked by the relentless Japanese kamikaze bombers, damage control crews on board Mahan valiantly struggled to extinguish the fires spreading through the wardrooms, gun shelters, mess compartments, and forward magazines. Commanding Captain E.G. Campbell, a survivor of the sinking of the USS Perkins destroyer in November of 1943, found himself in charge of a similarly chaotic situation. Campbell kept receiving troubling reports of raging fires throughout the ship, particularly in the spaces below deck. The fires also caused explosions of ordnance stored in the vicinity. After a few minutes, it was evident that Mahan's high speed only fanned the fires, and the disarray below deck prompted the captain to give a final order to abandon the ship. At 10.25 a.m., less than an hour after the first kamikaze attack, the ship was entirely evacuated. 
Soon, destroyers Walk and Lamson arrived at the scene of the attack to begin picking up the survivors. Campbell. Minutes after the last survivor left the ship, Captain Campbell scuttled Mahan with a combination of torpedoes and gunfire. The ship was gone in a matter of minutes. Despite the devastating hits from three kamikaze pilots and the ensuing fires, the casualties from that fateful day were not as high as they could have been. The losses that day included six men and 31 wounded crew members, with only 13 requiring hospitalization. Lieutenant Commander Campbell received a silver star for his brave actions during the kamikaze attack and the subsequent sinking of the vessel, as well as Mahan's successful bombardment of Cape Gloucester on December 26, 1943. According to the captain, there could have been much more losses if it weren't for the brave work of his crew, which did an almost miraculous task in fending off so many kamikaze attacks. Despite being mostly inexperienced teenagers, their performance was exemplary, disciplined, and courageous. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and share it with someone who might like it. Also, don't hesitate to check out our other Dark Documentaries channels, where you can find more exciting historical and military content from the last centuries, and click on the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos, which we publish regularly. Stay tuned.